see this this keyword is like this class object it represents current class object okay so suppose mm -hmm. i have class 1 okay and i have class 2 mm -hmm. now suppose uh, class 2 hmm suppose class 2 is having one um, variable under main we have one variable int a age equals to 10 okay and in class 1 also we have same variable int age equals to suppose 70 whatever 40 the variable name is same age and age right now mm -hmm. if in class 2 you will create an object of class 1 obj1 equals to new class 1 then when you will type obj dot okay obj1 dot you will be getting your uh, age variable, right? Why I'm not getting it? OPJ1, OPJ1. Now oh, it is small c. Okay. Mm -hmm. One second, refactor, rename, class ABC. Okay. I think Akla trying to join Arti. No, I'm not getting any pop up here. Then she's asking about uh, where, are, where are you, Arti? Look at the chat. Oh, is it? One second. Yeah. I'm not getting pop up. Um, I normally get a pop up, right? When someone tries to join, one yeah. second. Yes, I'm sorry, waiting for you. Where are you, Arti? She thought Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Class one, class two, okay. Now I got the pop up. Yeah. Okay. Class one, copy. And here I will be we will be creating the class one object. So class one and class one. Okay. Now see here also you have age, there also you have age. So opj one dot age when you write mm -hmm. is equals to when you see age. Arti, are you saying class now? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing class only. Just started Akhila, nothing special I've done. Just created two classes. 
Ah, why? Because you don't tell me join the this thing. I am waiting. Just I am waiting for you only. Oh, there in the chat. Why? <laughs> yeah, I am waiting on the chat. When you are open the this window, I will open in my laptop. That's why I am waiting. How do I know you are opening the Zoom without at, telling? At seven every day. At the um, uh, training timing, I open it right. Last that... time you last time you told Arti. I open 10 to 20 times. It will come the window. Keep on loading. I'm watching. Keep on loading and it's gone. You told when I am joined, I will message. That's why I'm waiting for you in my phone instead of opening. Okay. No problem. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm really waiting for you only. Mm -hmm. But I don't know you are opening this one. Okay. okay. No problem. No problem. If I'll not be here, right? If I'll be getting late uh, due to some reason, I'll message there. If if you come here at the uh, training timing, I mean like uh, class timing, if I, you will not find me here, then don't wait for a long time. Wait for five minutes. If I'm not here, that means I'm either I'm not able to wake up at that time or maybe I have some work because of which I'm not even able to inform you. So don't wait there for a long time. Okay, that will not happen now because I've changed the timing. But uh, if that happens, in case, then don't wait in front of class. Yeah, what you are telling about today topic, I don't know. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just started. Give me five minutes. I'll explain you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. This is class one dot h. Class one dot h. Why this age is not coming here? Class one, OBJ one. Hmm. Okay, something is very wrong. Let me clean my project. Oh, 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 because this is in main method. So this is local variable. I should have written it here. Okay. My mistake. It should be global. It should be open. Yeah. If, if we'll write anything inside a method, it will not be accessible outside. That's why. So mm -hmm. int h equals to equals to, sorry, equals to each. Okay. Now look at this case. Uh, Akhil, I'm uh, teaching them about the age variable, sorry, this uh, keyword, okay, in uh, code, if you'll see in an encapsulation also when we created setter and getter by default, uh, uh, this keyword was there. This is current class object, this refers to, okay, so mm -hmm. this refers to current class object. Now, in this case, if you see the code from class one, also age is coming from this class, also age is coming, right? There, here also we have age, and there also you have age. So, what if tomorrow you will write? Now you are able to write it like this. One second, you are able to write it like this: obj dot age equals to age. Now, which age is getting assigned to which one? You don't know, but because of this object, you know this, right? That okay, this object belongs to class one. That's why object one class age is getting assigned to this age, right? Because of this object, you can see that. But the other thing which you can do is, you can write obj1, um, okay, one more thing. Okay, obj1 dot age is equals to this dot age, okay? This will also work. So this age is uh, global or in local, right? Local variable or which one? Um, this dot age? Yeah. What do you mean by global or local? Okay. Okay. When you have, I have written it in inside uh, method. That's why you're saying mm -hmm. that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Okay. That doesn't matter. Okay. Now, the only thing is instead of creating object, you're using this keyword to access that age nothing else so okay. now oh what happened 
this dot age age you are directly taking now mm, why it is not working Just now it worked, right? What is the issue here? What? It is not even showing message. Then, yeah. Oh, I cannot use this in static context. Of course, of course, of course. That's why this is static, right? That's why here. Then understand this in this other way, okay? Ignore this. You cannot use this keyword in static because in static, you don't need object, right? So this mm -hmm. keyword is behaving as an object and that's why this is not allowed here. But now um, look at this example, encapsulation one. Mm, where is it? Encapsulation one. Okay, here the variable names were different, right? My salary, my salary, and my salary. And the salary which was coming was someone else's salary. What if you have here my salary only? Okay, the same control C, control V. So same keyword if you have, okay, the one which is coming from another method, another class, and the one which you have already here. So if you see my salary here also available and the one which you're gonna assign, that is also suppose my salary. Okay, now here there is a confusion. So in this case, what you can do, you can say, okay, my current salary, this dot my salary will be the salary which you are giving. So when you say this, this means current class object, like current class uh, variable, you can say it is defining. So okay. now there will not be any confusion. The one which is coming is again my salary, but you are not assigning it the same salary to same same variable, like same variable to same variable. These two are different now. Mm -hmm. This salary is getting assigned to your current class salary. So this does nothing but it represents your current class object. It behaves as an object without creating. Okay. So basically it will take uh, my salary from class, different classes, right? Class Achilla, one, class yeah. one. Same okay. class. And then whatever you will assign, yeah, this will not only my salary this is first confusion right suppose my salary is this okay mm. this thing will also get assigned to my current salary okay oh yeah. this is integer sorry i kept it in number okay but this only represents your current class object nothing else yep, yep. got it okay yep. everyone got this guys everyone got this i haven't created object to access this my salary variable, right? But to remove that confusion, I just added this, this keyword in front of it so that the one which is coming from another class is different and this one is different. My compiler will uh, be confusion free because of this. You guys getting it? Half, half. Half, half, why? Where is the confusion here? Please uh, see. Mm. Let me teach you in some different way. Mm. This is class two, this is class one. And in class one, you have int age. So you are saying um, in class two, you created one object, so method, public void add. And after addition, it returns sum. And sum equals to 10 plus 20. Okay. And this is in sum. In sum equals to 10 plus 20. And you want to return it. So return sum. And if you are returning something, it should be int. Correct. Now your method is over. So it is returning 30. 
Now this ad you will be calling in your class one. So how are you going to call it in class one? Class two, OBJ two equals to new class two. Correct, control shift F. Now in class two, OBJ two, how you write OBJ two dot add, right? Now suppose this add is returning you some value. Okay, that value you kept it in. Mm. Addition is returning some, right? But this age variable will not be useful then. Uh, okay, whatever is it, it is returning that you want to assign to age variable, suppose. So, suppose the sum is your age now. So, whatever calculation will come, that will be your age. So, int age is equals to nothing but obj2 dot add you can do this but just because you are under static method you are not able to do this so let's do it outside static method so create one method here public void age calculation okay and in this age calculation method control v you already had age right so your age, this dot age is nothing but the age which is or the sum which is coming from another method, which is add method from another class, right? But now the problem here is you are outside main and in main, main is a static method. So you cannot create object inside it. So this is not allowed inside main. So what you'll do here is um, you want to call this add method, but you are not able to call this add method, right? So we'll go back. We'll go back and we'll do one thing. Mm, this is int sum. Okay, let's see. Here I'll declare one global variable. I'll say uh, this is global, right? Int age is global. So int age is global, and I'll write whatever it this object two will bring. I'll put it to age. So this dot age earlier was it was forty, but now because you called this add method, this age is now thirty because this add gonna return you. 30 right so static variable 40 40 30 now this age this dot age equal equals to 70 will declare and then this out the age from add age calculator is okay and let's call this age calculator here so class one obj1 equals to new class one and obj1 dot each calculator just a second guys okay what i have done i have created class two let me put class to this side so so in class two you created an object obj1 of class one but you are not using it so let's remove it okay so you created class two in class two you have some add method which returns the sum okay now just a second This is returning sum. This sum you will take here and whatever sum you are getting that you are assigning on each. 
okay so now your age is 30 earlier it was 40 but now that you assigned the sum now it is 30 and this 30 age you are assigning to 40 let me see let me see what is happening one second see when you assign this dot age equals to 70 okay look at look at the steps guys here let me debug my code okay and here also let's print age after you assigned it to age right here also you print the age this out mm. this here you are assigning add whatever is add method written that you are assigning to age so what it should be it should be your till now it was 40 till now it was 40 because now it is not this line is not yet executed right so till now it is 40 but the moment you will execute this line it will be 30 because you are adding 10 and 20 so now see this now it should print 30 see so globally it is 40 now because you added the return the sum to the age so it is oh, 30 it printed 30 now after that we're gonna call this method age calculator here so see this i want to go inside age calculator to see what is happening so this time instead of pressing this button this uh, step over button i'll press step into button okay now i went inside this method from here i went inside this method now what I'm reassigning age value, but this time I'm not using object the way I was using here, right? I was using that variable and directly assigning it the value. This is not allowed outside the method. So that's why I'm using this keyword. So using this keyword, what you are doing, you are reassigning your age variable. This class is age variable to 70. Now what it will print? 70. So nothing, the nothing rocket science here. Whenever there is a confusion, right? Whenever there is a confusion that which method belongs to which class. So your current class method or your current class variable you can handle using this keyword. Nothing else. I'm not creating any object here to access age. Just by writing this dot age, it is accessible. Nothing rocket science. Getting it? Getting it, guys? Yep, yep. If you're not getting it, still I can show you, but let's let's understand it with code only. Okay, one more keyword is there. Not only this, uh, there is a super keyword also. So, let's see some code on this. Okay. See this what they have done they are getting x they already have their x both the things they have now there is a confusion right so which value is getting assigned to which one so you are saying whatever value is coming that is getting assigned to your current class x current class x variable is getting assigned with a new x okay and whatever is coming you will keep it at the right hand side whatever is already there you will put it in left hand side so the value to which you're going to assign will be your left hand side. So to left hand side value, you are assigning the one which is coming from external method. So this is the use of this keyword. That this keyword refers to the current object in a method or constructor. Current object means current class object. Simple. Yep. Okay. They also have the same code, but because it is not, not a big um, keyword there, you can directly use it. One more keyword is there that is super keyword. Um, super keyword represents to um, just immediate parent class object. Okay. So see this. See, refer to parent class objects. 
so now if you look at their code okay let me copy paste this code or let me execute it here only you have three classes one class vehicle one class car and one class test okay let's see this um, Guys, in this way also you can create your classes. Okay, multiple classes. This is called as nested classes. So in the same class, I created all the class, but I made sure that in my test class I have my main method. Okay, now see this. Normally, what I used to do, class one, class two, class three. In the same way, I created three classes here. One is test class in which I have main method. Second is normal vehicle class. Okay, and the third is car. Now vehicle is a parent. Kind of a, a thing under vehicle you can have multiple vehicles. I mean, like you can have motorbike, you can have car, you can have truck, whatever. But vehicle is a main main class, right? So what you have done, you created one car class, and you made this car class extend to vehicle, extend to vehicle. You made this vehicle a parent of child class. Child class is car. So car is a child class which is calling for help from the parent class. So now your parent class is Vehicle class. Understood till now? Yeah. Car is child. Car is subclass, you can say. Child or subclass, which is extending to vehicle class because vehicle is a top, top, top level uh, umbrella, right? Now, now to create a connection between them, you use this extends keyword. That is okay. Now, if you see the car class, the maximum speed for car class is 180. The maximum speed in the vehicle class is 120 that means parent class is saying maximum speed should be 120 child class is saying 180 but now what you want is you are saying no i want to display my maximum speed you are, you created one method display you there you want to display the maximum speed as the one which is which belongs to parent class not the child class so you are not not just saying max speed you're not if you'll see this max speed here it will print 180 but if you'll print, okay, let's see this. You just called here display method. You created an object and you called the display method. Now see. Mm. There is, okay. Now see this. Maximum speed is 180. Now it is taking 180 because it is printing your class value but the moment you will write super dot max speed now it will take now here also you see super dot max speed when you write okay super dot max speed so this max speed will take this one you see this is getting highlighted when i'm clicking on this this one is not getting highlighted this one is getting highlighted because super represents immediate parents class immediate parent class okay so see this. Mm. If we use this keyword there, hmm. it will take one eighty. Yes, it will take one eighty. Cool. Now you understood the difference. Super in this, you are not creating object, but still you are behaving as if your this keyword is behaving behaving as if it is an object of that current class okay now you can do this also um but, but in static we can't use it. yes you cannot because in static you cannot create object right static sees direct use the class name so this dot maximum speed equals to super dot max speed now what will be the max speed so your this dot max speed which was 180 earlier now it got assigned to yes 180 so now this dot max speed, if you will present here, here, so it will print 120. 
सिंपल ओके सो दीज आर जस्ट कीवर्ड्स दे हैव क्रिएटेड फॉर द इजी एक्सेस नथिंग एल्स Yeah. Uh, I think you mentioned before in static we cannot create object. Hmm. We should not. That's why static came into picture. Direct class name, common garden, right? You cannot create your own personal garden. But so. Uh, mm -hmm. in the in the class test, uh, can you twentieth line, twenty first line? So there is public static void main, and they created one object right here. small object yeah. in twenty yeah hmm. so hmm. it means like they are creating object in static right i'll explain okay that is just the exception for main method only in main method you can create objects in any other methods you cannot create object like you cannot create object of uh, uh, how to explain this mm -mm -mm. okay one second let me uh, finish this topic and explain you okay yeah um where is my static folder here this one you understood right this and super keyword both and yeah. both you understood right no confusion here now see your static and the non static is bottom from the mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. package just saw that thank you static is here so let's close it oh sorry close all Okay, this is just a notes console. Let me take it at the bottom. See, static was salary. No, you know. Hmm, name was static. I think no salary two is also static. so this salary 2 is a static right you cannot use this with static this is a rule of java because it is a static variable that means it should be accessible with class name this is what we were doing right pravin was asking for salary 2 from where from person's class right and that's why what we have done directly called it using persons that is your class name now what you are doing by writing this dot even if there is a connection between these two pravin and uh, pravin and persons okay suppose persons extends no reverse of reverse pravin extends person okay now there is a connection between these two okay Pravin person. Now here, what you will trying to do, you will be creating persons obj equals to new persons, and then you will be like obj dot salary two, right? This is something that you will do, and you will assign it to new value, which is suppose four thousand. and here you are directly accessing using persons now this should not be allowed actually mm -hmm. this should not be allowed why it is not giving error that's my question see change access to static using persons and remove static modifier of salary too but it should give me error why it is not giving me error it's just giving me a uh, warning the static field person dot salary too should be accessed in a static way i'm not using it in a static way i'm creating a object of it uh, uh what why it is not giving error let me let me do one thing here also not giving error right let's see Hmm, worked without any error. I think it just gives warning, not error. You can use it, but with the warning. Okay. Before change ten, hello four hundred four thousand. 
okay so actually uh, what they are saying is it is a functionality created in such a way for you guys to use it uh, sim in a simple way i mean like static keyword is created so that you don't ha you don't have to uh, put yourself in that all the efforts of creating object and everything then why you are directly using it this is not wrong they are saying but if you have created static then you should use it in static way so this is also okay this is also okay but this is not a error this is not a problem this is not going to cause any kind of confusion for compiler i was thinking that it should give an error but it is not giving error but warning just a warning that if you created some static thing then use it in static way otherwise don't create it in static way what's the use of it so i don't know they should have given me the error but not sure why not so let me check this pravin once okay remind me of this question tomorrow hello yeah yeah remind me of the remind me of this concept once again i'll i'll check this yeah. from my end today okay yeah. then we'll discuss it I, i was also not sure why uh, what it should written actually it should give an error but not giving so let me read about it once more time okay good question yeah. there thank you let me note it down Okay. okay. Let's move to the next topic then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So today we will be learning about uh, exception handling. Okay. Now, what is exception? Exception is kind of an error which we cannot see while writing the code, but later on when you execute it, that time you will get those exceptions. For example, um, new class C one. Okay, in class C one, you have main method. Inside main method, you have one number. Suppose num one is equals to hundred. What is the output of any number divided by zero? Hmm? Sorry. What is oh. the output of any number divided by zero? If I'll write num one divided by zero, what should be the output? Um, num one. Ah uh, no, any number divided by zero is infinity, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, um, final number is equals to num one by zero. So this is infinity, and this is something you cannot see here while writing the code because this statement is not yet executed. That's why you are not seeing that problem. That your compiler is not understanding that later on my compiler will get stuck into this thing. That the output will be infinity and he will not be able to proceed any further, right? So any number divided by zero is infinity, and that's why, if you see here, if I print final num, if I print final num here, now it is not showing any error. See, the code is not showing any error. But the moment I'll execute it, you are getting an exception, which is divided by zero exception. Okay, arithmetic exception. If you see the code wise, code wise there is no error here, but the moment you will start executing it, you will get that there is an error which is divided by zero. Arithmetic exception, it is 
uh, some meetings to see. If you want to read about this, cancel. See, any number divided by zero gives you infinity. And that is something your compiler cannot handle. And that's why while executing, you get that exception. And the problem here is, the problem here is after this statement, after this statement, line number nine, where you got the exception, even if you have written correct code, like thousand lines of correct code, if you have written, all these codes are correct, right? You are printing, suppose, num1. All these statements are correct, but still these statements will not execute. Why? Because you got the exception here and the moment you got the exception, your code stopped there. Okay, but you don't want this. You want that even if I got error here, I have thousand lines of code after that, right? So you throw an exception, write it in a, a console, but then still you execute the further lines. I'll, I'll handle it at the, at the later stage because first time you thrown that exception, I was not sure about it. So you execute everything and at the end, I'll read the exception, I'll resolve it and then I'll execute it because there can be multiple exceptions here, right? So now what we will do, we will put this statement. I know that, okay, some error is there in this statement because here my code was saying this, that at line number nine, you have error, now in line number 10. So I'll put it in try catch block. Okay, I'll say, okay, let's try this code. Let's try this code. And if any exception comes, we will catch it. Okay. The moment I wrote catch there, it is saying, okay, whatever exception will come, let's catch it here. And, oh, rule set. Yeah. And to catch it, you needed one container, which can keep exception the way you have int 10, right? This is a container which can hold integer value in the same way. If any exception comes in this block, this entire try block, that exception will get hold in a container of type exception. And the name of that container is E. Okay. And once you hold that exception here, then you can just do something or do some um, changes or you are like kind of handling that exception, right? So how are you handling it? You are saying, okay. E dot get message okay now what you are doing here is final sum okay it was inside try so it is not accessible um So what you are doing here, try to understand this code, okay? Earlier, what was happening? The moment you got the exception here at line number 13, nothing was executed, which is up after that line. Your code used to get halt at this point. After this, nothing, nothing was getting executed. But now that you handled your exception, how you handled it? Wherever you were getting that exception, you kept it in try block. You said, okay, try dancing. If you'll get any problem while dancing, we'll handle it, okay? So this is what you are doing. You are trying that piece of code. If you will get any exception, you will handle it here. You will catch it and you will handle it here. So whatever you want to do with that exception, you want to get the message of that exception, you want to get the sectors of that exception, whatever you want to do, which will help you later on after your entire code execution is done. Whatever you want to do, that, that thing you will access from the exception. So e dot get message because on e you had exceptions. So exception come message. Exceptions message. Simple. Now 
let's execute it now you see you got the exception still but the message of exception got printed here and with that remaining code also got printed not only your execution is not stopped here okay still the remaining code got executed at the end you saw the result and you found that okay do i do as your exception is coming so let's go and handle it so whatever wherever you have written this try block inside that you'll see where can i get the divide by zero exception and there you will go and handle it you will remove it and will divide it by two whatever your code is okay you you guys getting my point here you guys understanding it yep yep yeah so if i'll note it down properly then see this exception first thing is not visible to eyes before executing executing why because it does not show any red mark or anything with in under that line second thing with error you can execute your code your code does not stop uh, at the point where you have error for example if i have one extra curly bracket here this is an error right so if i execute this code it will tell me that you have error but still it will tell me do you want to still launch with that error i'll say okay always launch even if error exists still you execute wherever you will get error you throw uh, an error but if you are not getting error execute my code so if you see okay okay this example will not work here hmm because this is like visible right but still it it helped you to execute okay yeah this one will not work one second i'll show you some other example for this the only thing is even if you have error okay which is visible like standing error you have to solve it that's why it is not even executing your code but exception halts your execution even you cannot see it when you execute it then only you will understand that there is exception now wherever you got the exception after that nothing will execute unless you handle it okay so exception halts the execution at the line where you have exception third thing you have to handle the exception to execute the entire code okay so you handle it handle it in this way try and catch now there is no compulsion that every time you will get to know where your exception is maybe for example let's copy this maybe in this 500 lines of code now i, I just wrote five uh, five lines but maybe somewhere in this 500 lines of code you have exception you are not sure where so you can put entire those 500 lines of code inside this try catch so wherever you will be having exception that exception will get printed here now not only message if you see when i write e dot i'm getting so many methods right so localized method uh, message or um, fill in stack trace get cause i think it will not throw an error anywhere let's try this stack trace okay so these are different different methods if you want to know stack trace is nothing but in which sequence your code executed first what executed then second then third okay but now here there is no method calling nothing everything is, is inside main so you will not get any stack trace value but still let's see oh we have error here no right project clean clean now see here it got printed 100 then 100 then here you got the exception so these two thing will not get printed because here you got exception but it is not yet cached right the moment you got the exception at line number 20 22 sorry 22 yes directly after that it came into catch block it came into catch block oh sorry one second 
Hmm. See this. You got exception here? No. You got exception here? No. 19, 20. No exception. 21, empty. 22, you got the exception. The moment you got the exception, it came into catch block. Now here, it will print the message of that exception. So printed the message of that exception. After that, it was trying to get the stack trace, but there is no stack trace here. Like there is no method calling here. So that's why no data. So you're getting some garbage value here. After that, three time again, num1. So what was your num1? 100. So if you see actually how many times your num1 should get printed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But how many times it is getting printed? One, two, three, four, five. Two times it is not getting printed. Why? Because the moment you got the exception, after that, whatever code you have, it will not get executed unless you catch it and handle it. Once you handle it, handled it, then the remaining line will execute. Okay. So in exam also or in interview also, they'll ask you, will this line get executed or will this line will get executed? So if unless your exception is not handled, remaining code will not execute. You guys getting me? Yeah. Yeah, so these these two lines will never execute. So if your exception is at the end here, like exception is here, then these four lines will execute and then you got the exception and then it got handled in a uh, catch block. But then if it is in mid, then whatever you have written inside try, that will not execute. Like after after that line, nothing will execute. Okay. Now, Let's see the sequence of exception handling. For example, in this five lines, I have two, three exception. One is divide by zero exception. Similarly, we have a file not found exception. For example, um, normally how you create a object, you create class name C1 OBJ equals to new C1. This is how you create an object. Correct. Now what you are doing, instead of new C1, you are putting it null you are saying null value that means zero value so now your object will get created but it does not know like what kind of object or what kind of functionality i should do because this is not how a object should be created so your object is handling a null value now so that means if i'll do obj dot so it should give me num1 right it should give me num1 but it is not giving because it does not know for which class you got this object created. Okay. So that's why if you see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm Look at this line. You created the object, but then you made it null. That means it is not holding now this thing. Earlier it was holding this thing, new C1. But now it is holding null value. Null means zero value. It is not pointing anywhere. It's the power of this object is now zero. So now if you write obj dot. Of course, it will not be able to access num1 because it is null now. Give me a minute. Mm. I created the object. It is null. I'm not able to access it. So, how to show you null pointer exception? Let me think how to write a code for it. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, no problem. Uh, give me a second, guys. Let me finish this um, divide by zero and in new code, exactly in same code, I'll show you null pointer exception for uh, objects. Okay. First, let's finish this divide by zero exception. So now you understood that this thing, catch block, try block, exception handling, getting exception messages and everything. Now the problem uh -huh. here is... Mm -hmm. uh, so... So we done with handling exception, right? Mm, yes. So you mentioned we have, let's say 500 lines of code. Mm. So we got the message when we, when we execute the 
could there mm. is the exception mm. and then we use try we use mm. try and put the 500 lines in the yes, try right. block correct and then catch and then what should we write in the catch so whatever you want to do with that exception like you later on once your entire execution is finished then you and then it will on. pick the exception where the exception is yes so it will tell you everything like what is the exception message at what line you got it what is the stack trace of it so it it's on you how you want to handle your exception so I can, once we hmm. yeah yeah my question is once we get the exception hmm. so then then we know where is the exception right correct correct and then if we want to execute the code because it won't execute right the code won't execute until we get the it will execute, but at this, this is the power of exception handling that earlier you were not handling it, and that's why your code was not executing. The, no, the, the above lines, can you see uh, above 24? There's 21, 22, 21, 22. Those won't execute, right? Or... No, these will execute because these are before exception came into picture. So these two lines will execute. After that, you got the exception, and that's why these two will not execute. Which after is after, execution. yeah. Unless you handle it. So once you handle it, now this will execute. But earlier, when you were not handling it, the time at time when uh try catch was not there, that time th these things were was also not executing, right? Because you haven't handled those exceptions. So the moment you got the exception, remaining every code stops executing. Um... Because so forget point? about 38, 39, and 40. Mm -hmm. Like there is no lines, okay? So we have only 25, 26. 21, so, 22, 25. Before we, mm -hmm. we don't know where is the exception. Before mm -hmm. 21, 22 will execute, and then from 24 it will stop execution, right? This is... And then one second, let me write in line numbers A, B, C, D. Okay, and then number one, F, G, H. Okay, so uh, now you are saying which one should I Can execute? you please, uh, uh, like, hide? Those ones like these ones, F G H. Okay, you put in comments. Okay. Yeah. Now. So, so we have an exception here. We know, right? Because at line number twenty, it's, yes. it's zero, and we hmm. know that. Hmm. But in the actual code, if we don't know in the hmm. five hundred lines code, hmm. so when we execute, we will get the error Correct. in the console, and then we will put uh, everything in the try block. Yes, line number 24, right? So line number 24 is having exceptions. So you put either only line 24 or you put entire two, three lines of code which is responsible for throwing an exception at line number 24 because this number can be coming from line number 21 or 22, right? So you can make yeah. sure that you put all these five lines into try catch and handle it. Okay. And then uh, So if you'll put this catch, like only this much into try, if you put only this line for try, and you will put catch here because catch should directly come after try, right? So if you ca put catch here, then these two lines will also execute because before these lines, you already cached it and handled it. You getting my point? Yeah. So it depends. Earlier we were putting try here, and then catch here. So these two lines were getting skipped there between exception and handling it. So that's why these C and D was not getting printed. But now everything will get printed. Mm -hmm. See you, you will be putting try here. Catch here. Oh, control Z.
okay now what should execute uh, out of all these five lines a b will execute c d will not execute because yet your exception is not cached and then you will come here you will handle it and then f g h will execute Okay. Clear? Yeah. So then what's the point of, you know, writing this uh, C and D if they're not executed, like, you know, exception is handled. After mm -hmm. that, why they are not displaying? C and D. Yeah, uh, C and D. Like you want to remove those lines, why? You can keep your lines, but later on you, like you don't want to halt your execution. Suppose 3,000, 4,000 lines of code are there. Hmm. So not, they won't display, not. right? This C and D, right? Yes, they will not. They're not executing, right? Hmm. Now they are but not. We executing handle correct. the exception. Yes, you handle the exception. But why they are not executing? Line twenty-five and twenty-six. It will not execute because at this time you haven't handled it. When your code started executing, it came at twenty-one, twenty-two, at twenty-four you got the exception, but twenty-five and twenty-six. Will not get executed because you got sure. the exception you here. You handle it after thirty. So after thirty block, like this catch block, whatever will be there. That yeah, will yeah. yeah, yeah. You haven't handled it here, right? So yeah. Either you so put your put catch block directly catch here, block, yeah. exactly, and then execute the remaining code. So now that I handled it at line number uh, twenty-four, it is my decision. Either I want to keep this in this try block or not. Now that I if know, if I that, put a uh, catch after number like after twenty four, then what will be the result? This thing will also execute C and D. If oh, you okay, want to simple. See. Yep. Yeah, simple. Where you are handling it after that only. Okay, so you move this. Suppose your try is still here only. You handle it. You got the exception here. You cached it here, and then you are printing it. So now C D. Hmm. 33, 34, everything will execute. Now see this. Okay. So where you are handling it, that is your decision. But if you are not, you haven't handled it yet because you were not sure out of these 500 lines, where should be the, where can be the exception. So you can put everything inside a try block. So anywhere there will be exception, it will throw that. And why I decided to keep five lines in, inside try block is because there can be multiple exception in that five line. For example, suppose at line number one, this is line number one, right? So 21, 22, there is no exception. At line number 24, there is an exception. Now again, at line number um, 24, you have exception. At line number 25, there is no exception. Now again, you have exception, suppose. So let's create some different type of exception. File. Mm, file equals to new. Right. Ignore this, guys. This is not for you. Okay. ABC dot txt. Hmm. see this now now suppose you executed your code okay and there are multiple exceptions present at line number 27 also there is one exception and at line number which line was saying 30 or 31 okay one second text to mr uh, i think this, at, at this yeah. line it will throw an exception okay and at this line 31 also you have exception but when you have series of exception just because you are there is a rule that the moment you will get exception, your code will stop. And that's why at the very first statement itself, it will stop. That's why see here, even though you have two exceptions in your code, still it is stopping at divide by zero. Earlier I commented it, right? So let me re-execute it. So you see divide by zero. It is stopping at divide by zero. It will never execute this file not found one, even though multiple exceptions are there. So what I'll do, I'll execute the entire code. I'll solve it. I'll handle it. Okay, this time. Now, Mm 
Look at try catch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So far, all the exceptions we need to put try and catch, right? No, there is no rule solve like it? that. But if you can, if you can solve one and re-execute it. So okay. the concept here is first come first serve base. First serve basis. Uh, if you are getting for uh, file not found uh, before uh, any other exception, it will get handled first. You can see only that error first. Okay, this is mm -hmm. how you handle it. First okay. come first serve basis. Uh, display or, or exception errors will get display in get displayed in the console, and this is how you gonna handle it. Okay, now um, it is giving error, right? I know why it is giving error. We cannot have um. Finally expected. expected. Yeah, finally expected. Finally. I know, I know. This concept I'll tell you one second. Try inside try you cannot have catch. Mm -mm -mm -mm. One second, okay. Don't get confused, guys. Ignore this for a minute. Mm. You have catch here, you have catch here. Okay. Let's go directly from here. Um, hmm. A, B, you're going to get exception at line number 24, 25. So exception will get thrown here. It will never reach at this line. So you will not be able to handle it. Correct. But now. Hmm, hmm. Okay. Now, suppose, suppose for example, you did something because of which this exception, you think so, that this exception will get solved. Okay, at line number 24, you will not get any exception. This is what you think because you have earlier when you executed it, you got an exception and you think so that you handled it. And now imagine as if you will not get this exception. Okay. And you are not sure because when you write 3000, 4000 lines of code, you never know which line can be responsible for your exception. So now, what you want to do here is not every time you want to print a message of an exception. So what you will do, you will create multiple catch block. Okay, one catch, second catch, and third catch. Now why I created three different catches here, even though already one catch was with me. One was this, one was one is this, and one is this. Okay. You created three catch block because you never, you don't know which, at which line, which type of exception will come. So what you are saying here is in this try block, if I get divide by zero, which is an arithmetic exception, you handle it in this way, arithmetic and how you're going to, how you want to handle your arithmetic exception. That is your choice. So suppose I am, I'll just print the message on the screen that uh, you got arithmetic exception. Okay, this is how my way of handling this exception, customized exception or customized message I am printing to handle that exception. If I get file not found exception, I want to handle it in different way. I want to print uh -oh. Okay, this is my way. Or, and in third way, whenever I'll get null pointer exception, okay, that I might just want to print the message of an exception. So sys out e dot get message. This is my exception, okay? So this is again a question that if exception throws a line by line exception, like first come first serve basis type of exception, like it throws error according to that sequence, then how are you going to handle it? Because you never know in that 3000 lines of code or the 500 lines of code, which you added anywhere can any, any exception can come, right? So you should write a different, different ways to handle it. You never know which kind of exception will come. So can we have different, different catch block or in single catch block, you will handle it because handling it can be different, right? For different type of exception. So this question will always be asked to you that, can we have multiple catch for same try because same block of code you are executing. Maybe first time the same block of code is throwing some other exception. Later next time it will throw some other exception. 
so how you gonna uh, handle this kind of situation where you you never know which kind of exception will come so answer to that is create multiple catch block and relax whatever exception will come that will get handled in their respective block you getting my point only yeah. these three mm -hmm. type of exceptions or we have more type of exceptions there are many more but most of the time you will be yeah automation queue is normally get these three exceptions okay automation is using only these three yeah not using but most of your time like 90% of the time you will be getting these three only mm -hmm. okay if you think that you are getting some other exception and which is not handled in these three then you can create this also um catch create a parent exception okay under this exception all these three comes so either you want to handle one by one then provide the name or you say okay anything other than this will come if it will get handled in the parent exception type so okay so you gonna this is kind of a generic type of exception you are saying that anything which is not in these three will come here and will handle it later okay so depends which type of exception will come accordingly different different catch block will get called if arithmetic first coming like here see i still have line 25 to 29 there are two exceptions here the divide by zero also file not found also okay if i execute it with exception it is throwing that you got arithmetic exception this one okay now suppose this thing i handled using some i changed it to divide by 0 or sorry divide by 2 or something i handled it and now suppose this is how i handled it okay uh, one question mm -hmm. yeah so you saying you handled it right mm -hmm. before we want to use zero hmm. so it means we are not handling it or we are still you like we use try block and we executed whole thing with the num num one by zero it means we'll get infinitely valuable yeah handling does not means that you got the solution for it because there is no solution for it right yeah. but how but you gonna handle it you don't want your code to stop there simple this is what is called as what is the meaning of handling handling but right. now you you said we are handling it by using two yeah because we are it doing thrown it. exception right yeah because it thrown exception i got it so i realized my mistake that because of this my code's execution can stop so i have to handle it so either i'll handle it like i'll not allow this code to execute and i'll handle it here in this catch block or if i realize my mistake i'll come back and i can change it so that i'll not get any exception so there is two ways um what to handle the exception yeah no this is because is if you change it to two it hmm. won't throw any exception we don't need to do try handle and it. catch correct. correct but if if we don't want to change the value Zero to two. I want to use zero only there. Hmm. Then you will keep getting exception. So we are using try block block to skip that one, right? No, it. Or... If it is. Okay, one second. Let's start it again here. Yeah. You got the exception here, right? But while writing the code, you were not aware that you will be getting exception because it does not show any kind of red line or a red mark that there is an error. So what you want is, you know that there can be multiple exceptions and you don't want your code to stop here only. Because suppose in the third line itself, you are getting exception. 3000 lines of code is still pending. So you don't want to stop the execution of your code there itself. You want to see that if I execute 3000 lines of code, I can get multiple exception also, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, hmm. exception, the exception means it's an error. But It's an error. But when we execute we only know that there is exactly. error after the executing only you can see correct so when when we get the exception it's error we have to change it yes sure. either you come huh, after you got the result final report on the console you like you don't want to again and again execute and handle it 
one time you executed it you got the result you will come you will either change it or you will keep it as it is you will work on another exception because like every time you will not be having any solution for that exception right so what you will do you will say okay let's skip this let i'll not comment it out but i'll handle it in try catch block like this i'll handle it here and then again let's come and execute another remaining code and okay this is coming after this right okay see this mhm mm they wanted before only So suppose you got the exception. Now you don't have solution for this right now. Suppose, okay, you you want to see, okay, I'll handle it later. Let me see if any other exception is here or not. So you'll put it in try catch. You will execute the remaining code, and later on you will find the solution of it, because exceptions are very hard to handle. So what you want, you will be like, okay, let's keep it for three four days. Let's keep this exception aside. Let's execute the remaining code and see. And later on, when I found my code is working fine, then I'll work on this exception. In that case, also you can put it in try catch and you can skip it. Like your code is not stopping because of this exception anymore. You getting my point? Yeah. Handling does not mean you found the solution of it. Handling is like it's okay if that problem is there. We we don't have solution for it right now. If you if we have, we'll do the sol make the changes and we'll make uh, sure that that exception will not come. But if not, we cannot handle it. Then also, I want my code to execute. that means i'm handling that exception yeah so if we know that num number divided by 0 is infinity like already exactly. we know that mm. like right mm. so i mean what the case like if you don't know like we know i mean uh, what should i say that it's not infinity but we thought it was like some right number mm. you know mm. it's not mm. a, uh, we mm. think that what should i say okay whatever you you were not aware about the exception suppose yeah yeah then okay. what's the like how do we write the like with some other example okay suppose here you had exception but you were not aware about the exception so what you have done you you said okay whatever type of exception is there if i know arithmetic then it will come here but if i don't know what kind of uh, exception is there i want it to come here and there i i'll be write i'll be writing unknown exception and with that i want to see what exception it is so i'll be printing e dot get message so in message it will tell me that this is a type of exception you got okay yeah okay this is good yeah this one no so, is good this way i'll handle it so later on i'll understand okay this this message it is throwing divided by 0 that means this kind of exception is there or that kind of exception is there or um, there are many more methods to understand what kind of exception you got So we'll yeah, RT. Hmm. So if we have like three, four exceptions in hmm. the same code, hmm. when we put the try block, uh, hmm. the whole code it will give all exceptions at a no. time or one one uh, time one exception. And then okay. we need to handle it, and then again. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. First come, first serve basis. Because exceptions are very uh, strong thing. it holds or stops the entire execution so the moment you got it either you handle it there itself or uh, remaining code will not execute for example um file not found okay this exception was there you cached it here now again yeah. you know this exception is there right so again handle it put it in try block and handle it in this way and then execute so wherever you are getting exception handle it there itself if you right now does not have a uh, control shift f does not have any sol solution handle it execute your code get the report at the end read that report properly and try to understand or analyze your code and then in one go itself change everything and work on your exception next time you will not get any exception see you see both the exception got handled your code is not stopping here because of those exception but you got the output that okay this is the exception this is the exception two time we are getting exception and this is a line number this is a line number so let this 3000 lines of code execute later on i'll change these two things so in one go itself you are changing everything but if you'll put everything in one try block first come first serve basis will happen there 
You getting my point? Yep. Yep. And just, uh, and and at line number twenty four, there is exception. We know that. And if it is related to other code, so mm. we we don't get the output part. Uh, it is related to other code, like before this or after this. After, after the exception. So you are saying if final number is somewhere getting used here, you will yeah. again get an exception, of course. You will again get an exception. So if you haven't handled it, you will get an exception again for sure. But at least in these lines, you will not get exception. After three thousand lines, like in last five hundred lines, if you are again getting exception, that is something which will save your time, right? You can handle yeah. it later. But at least in this three thousand lines of code, you are not getting any exception because of these lines. Your remaining code execution is not stopping. Yeah. So you, for temporary basis, you handled it. You haven't found the solution of it, but you handled it. It is not stopping the execution of your code. So it's only int type or like any strings also. Any type with everything you you will get exception. For example, here you got with. Into type right here you got with file not found now suppose here index of suppose or length of let's see length of message dot length this is a method you called okay and this thing you want to print on screen so there are so many types of exception okay now okay. see try and then directly catch Insert final to complete the try statement. No, I'll insert catch. Hmm. See this. Here you got the exception. You handled it with arithmetic. Now again you got file not found. You handled it it with file not found exception. Now you you gave two catch block. You said, okay, I don't know which kind of exception will come in these two lines: file not found or null pointer also. So you kept both. Now again, after giving this catch block, now again your code started where you wrote two lines of code, and again you know some kind of exception will come. But this time you don't know what kind of exception will come. That's why you are not creating any particular catch block, but you are creating any generic catch block. You are saying, okay, what kind of whatever kind of exception will come, I'll handle it here. In E one, and in E one, we'll see. I'll either print the exception message or I'll print my custom message. Okay. Now, if you try to uh, understand this code, this string message variable is equals to null. That means there is no data in that variable. But I told you when I taught you about string that string itself is a class internally. Correct? Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember? Yes. So if this is a class, that means this is an object of it. And when you say object equals to null, and when you try to handle or access any method with an object, message is an object for you for now because this class is this string is a class. So class object equals to new class name should come right, or some data should come. But you give null. So when you are trying to do null dot length, it cannot give you any length. And that's why it will throw an null pointer exception as well this time. See this? You see? Mm. Unresolved compilation. Once again, this is not an error. Here we have error. So, shift F. Then it's executed. Okay, you got. Arithmetic exception. You got file not found. Why? I'm going to shift F. Here you handled it. Catch. Try. Catch. After that, one more catch. Okay, two catches for this try. Then again try. Then catch. Then what? Why it is not 
and link it here give me a second you handled it here you handled it here you handled it here simple oh e1 that's why okay Hmm. Now you see, first you got arithmetic, you handled it. Your code is not stopping at that point. Then you came further, you again handled it. Now next time you again handled it, but you were not sure what kind of message will come or what kind of exception will come. So here they are saying, you, you are trying to invoke a length, but the length of the message is null. So it is unknown exception type. This is my message. This is my customized message. But here you should throw you you should throw a exception null pointer exception See, null okay 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 one second it is just throwing a message not an exception one second let me not handle it let's see what exception it throws now it should throw an exception here right line number 45 so null pointer exception yeah see this is how it will throw a null pointer exception with string also because this string is behaving as an object this is a class this is an object of it and that object is asking for some value but you made it null that's why null pointer exception so to handle it put it in try catch If you don't want to throw any kind of message, then also put catch block. It is not a compulsion that every time you have to write anything or something uh, in a catch block. You can keep it empty also. See, if you will not do anything, then it will not it will not help you to solve it later because you are not getting any message on the screen as well. So that's why people print message. So I'll be right. Thing e dot. Okay, so this is your exception message. Your actual exception is file not found. Sorry, null pointer. But this is a message. The way you got uh, divide by zero, right? In the same way, this is a message. Okay, so you handled it. So are you guys understanding this? Either keep every code inside one try and handle it in one catch. Or you can put multiple catch for single try. Or you can put different, different try and catches. You have three, okay. four option. Now it's it's your decision according to your code how you want to handle it. Okay. Okay. The final thing is your code execution should not stop at any point. Okay. This is how you have to handle it. Now there is one more thing here. Mm. Okay. Suppose you executed your entire code till here. Everything is getting printed till H. Now, or let me make it here. Suppose still file exception, file not found exception. You were, you were executing everything properly till here. Okay. After that, you decided not to catch the exception or not to handle the exception. So what we'll do?
hmm. see this till h everything was sorted okay till h printing but after that what you have done you looked for the code or you haven't looked for the code doesn't matter suppose you haven't written anything okay no without try you cannot write right okay mm. so you are you are not trying to handle that uh, exception here like you haven't handled it you just tried that code you know you have exception but you haven't handled it here in the catch block there is no catch block but still at the end what you want suppose you launched your browser or your chrome you launched your uh, website also in that you are doing all that uh, uh, code or whatever uh, test execution you are doing whatever you are doing but you are not trying to handle that exception you are like okay whatever exception will come that that will come i'll handle it later but not now but at the end for compuls compulsory what you want here that you want to close your chrome driver or chrome window or you want to close your execution at the end no chrome window should open even exception is there or not it does not matter to you anymore you are saying at the end this thing should happen like at the end thank you should print should get printed on the screen okay so this this is the finally block whatever you will write in the finally block that will execute at any cost whether you handled your exception or you haven't handled your exception it does not matter to this finally block everything whatever you will write in the finally block at any cost it will execute as a post condition okay so now see this you got the exception here okay you got the exception here null pointer exception after that you were expecting this to execute but just because you got exception this before handling thing is not getting executed but still this will definitely execute you haven't handled your exception that means anything after that should not execute right this is a rule of java that the moment you will get an exception your code will stop there itself but still if you want to execute something as a compulsory post condition whether you can hand or whether you handled your exception or not irrespective of that if you want to execute something at any cost at any cost in the end that code you can write inside the finally block okay uh, but can we write my, uh, like multiple final, final like yeah uh, that i am not sure of that we can write finally multiple finally or not but we'll, we'll give it a try but you cannot write it without try like if i'll not write try my my finally is of no use we are writing finally because we are saying we are not sure if we'll get exception or not so even if you get make sure you execute it this is importance of finally finally cannot be written without try so we can try before i mean i above try is uh, and the try is there no 34 can you try it after that that block yeah anywhere anywhere you can write okay, okay, okay. anywhere you can write but finally is like you are giving a, a kind of uh, you are doing some kind of request that okay even if an exception is handled or not irrespective of that please make sure that at the end you do this you are like, requesting that thing to your compiler uh, what was your question again multiple finally right let's try that i never tried that so let's see so for every finally it need one separate try block so this finally is already there for this try for example uh, if you remember if else loop for every if there should be one else you cannot directly write else in that in that pair only you have to write it so again the issue okay. it is saying finally is not oh, you cannot write it here either put try again don't write anything inside that no issue mm -hmm. mm. okay but finally will work yeah try is compulsory is finally okay. you can have catch, so we can put have... multiple messages right thank you you know anything that, anything so... whatever you want to do yeah okay. whatever you want to do any kind of chrome launching any kind of coding anything anything whatever you will be writing in finally that will execute at any cost yeah everything is getting executed and your exception got thrown here null pointer exception but still there is no impact of that exception on your code 
or your finally code okay this thing is not executed of course because here you got the exception after that whatever you have that thing will not execute and neither you are trying to uh, handle it but yeah. still this code is executing because it isn't finally yeah okay there's any doubts here this is very important uh, topic actually people ask lots of questions on this can you have oh, only try we apply this handling like in all the codes like encapsulation polymorphism like mm. you'll write like uh, like so many lines of codes mm. so we can put i mean in i mean try and catch is like you can put anywhere right like handling yeah, anywhere anywhere okay. Okay. okay one more thing you can do for example in main suppose outside main okay i think this is outside main yeah this is outside main okay so suppose outside main you have one method here okay um public void um division so for outside main you have one method division okay mm. now inside this division you again have something in sum of total whatever equals to and uh, 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 hmm. one question and uh, there you written public void so hmm. if you don't write public what will happen your compiler will not be able to understand that this is a, a method or this is an array or this is like this is a syntax provision you cannot do any changes to your syntax this is no, how you before i saw in the test code they didn't write uh, public Not this thing, yeah, yeah. In the previous thing, code, actually, yeah. <laughs> see if you if you see here, um, for this variable also, I never write public here, right? Public is a by default thing. Even if you, but void is not a by default thing. Like even if you don't write anything, by default it will be public. But if you want it private, you cannot expect it to be private by its own. By default, public is allocated to that. Okay. So we don't need to write. yeah for public you don't need to write but for yeah. in case of private you have to write it okay yeah. same with method also you have to compulsively tell them that what kind of data it going to return if i'll remove this if i'll write only public it will throw an error because return yeah. type is very important because there is no by default return type but there is by default access specifier that is public only with public this this works so only you mean public. we need to write or oh. like you no know, in public you have choice like make a habit of writing public but even if you don't write java can handle That's this fine. but yeah. if you okay. say okay. if you say both the things i'll not write i'll just write method name this that no, is not allowed to write written type yeah. Yeah. yeah public is a by default thing if you don't yeah. write or you write it will take public only for both okay. variables and methods okay yeah, yeah. so now what have us oh, yeah. that's why we don't write public when we define the variables right yeah here we also we just write in string in, yeah, like yeah. but for class also we do it right for main you have to do okay your main cannot be without public yeah main like here you it is not giving error but main is very powerful method i uh, one one day i'll show you the internal architecture of main this is a very powerful method why every time main should be the name of it why not anything else what is the string what is arguments i'll teach you that later but with main i'll i'll tell you i'll recommend you that you go with public always remain yeah. everything will be handled by java but don't I do it what is public static void name yeah i'll i'll explain that is what i'm saying this is a internal architecture of public static void main i'll show you one day but till that time follow the syntax for main always public static void main always okay. follow this string arguments also you cannot write anything else here okay now okay let's finish ex, uh, finish exception handling and then we'll see main so yeah what i was saying here you have one method okay here till here you handled everything but now there is one method which is coming to your inside your main method from outside which can have exception which you you never know being a main method you never know if that exception got handled or not here you got the exception sum of total is 2000 by 0 you will get an exception and you are trying to return 
hidden sum of total zeros. Okay, and now this division method you will be calling in. And one more thing, Arti. Hmm. Here you mention void, and you are using return. Hmm. So I changed it. Okay, that's why. Okay, so you, you are know, returning. Really difficult. Yeah. No, it is not. <laughs> no. Once you will start writing the code, it is not. Follow the sequence, guys. Nothing else. If Java is such a simple language, I mean, like it it gives you very uh, proper error message when you'll read it it is giving you line number 50 it is telling you what is the problem there go to line number 50 and check that so mm -hmm. java is very easy once you'll get these errors and when you'll work on uh, understanding those errors and how to solve it then java will become very easy for you mm -hmm. okay now okay till here you handled everything now this division method you are calling inside main somewhere so inside main suppose i create object here and uh, one more thing, Arti. Hmm. After you, you wrote public void, hmm. and next you can change your mind to you are writing return. Hmm. That time you are thinking void is not good and you are changing hmm. it. Yeah, because my code will why, give me error. Why, right? why you want to write return here? Why you want error. to remove the void? Where, Akila? Yeah. It returns sum of total. Yeah. Hmm. Why you are writing return? Because you are giving void already. Hmm. Because why I'm going to use this, right? Return. Because this division is doing, like you are preparing a coffee. Why you want to give that or return that coffee to drawing hole? Because someone wants to use that coffee. Someone wants to have that coffee. If you just want to go to kitchen and then you, you, you are preparing your coffee, you don't want to give it to someone else. You just want to keep it there. Then don't return it. But just because I want that this coffee should be utilized somewhere, I'm returning oh, that coffee so from kitchen to drawing hall. And if I'm giving coffee, that means someone is waiting for it. So I have to make sure that my process should give that indication that, okay, coffee is coming, coffee is coming, coffee is coming. Okay. So that if someone will use this method here, obj.division, they are using it because they are expecting coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in my case, they're expecting one int type of data. They don't know what is that data. They just know that int type of data is coming because they used this method, which says int. Now, if you see this division, guys, don't, don't worry about this lengthier code. We wrote it again and again and again. That's why it is lengthy. Otherwise, if you see, try and catch, try and catch, try and catch. Nothing rocket science. It is just looking lengthy. It is not that complicated code. Okay. Now, suppose I created an object inside main block, okay? This is inside main only, inside this bracket. Inside this curly bracket, till this curly bracket, inside this main block, I created one object, two, for my class. And I called which is outside main, which is division. But this division actually throws an exception, correct? This is throwing an exception. But just because I haven't handled exception here and first time this will execute, my this code will never execute because I never handled it. You getting my point? Here only my code will fail because I just wrote try but I haven't cached it. So let me catch it now. Okay, suppose I cached it. Now my code will execute this finally block and now it will come here. Right? Mm. Now, here you're going to get an exception. Let's see what exception we are getting. It should be divided by zero. So if you see, you are getting divided by zero exception because you are dividing 2000 by 0. But now your main class will get irritated. Your main class will be like, or suppose Akhila wrote the code, okay? And then Praveen is using that code. Akhila wrote division code, and then Praveen is using this division code in any of his class. Now being a developer, Praveen will be very angry that Akhila, if your code throws an exception, then handle it. If, if in your office, 10 people are using your code, division code, for their functionality writing, they will be very angry. They will be like, your code is having an error, exception, solve it. We all are facing issues because of that. People will get very angry. So now the solution to that is either Akhila should come here and handle it or Akhila should inform everyone that this code is still in progress and there are chances, there are high chances that this division code will throw an exception. So either you, if you are using it, if Praveen, you are using it, you handle it. I will just inform you that this code throws an exception. So how Akhila going to inform it? Akhila will be like, okay, division throws 
arithmetic exception. Okay. So now just by writing these two lines here, throws arithmetic exception, what Akhila did, Akhila just informed people that, okay, if you are handling this division, sorry, you are using this division method, make sure wherever you are using it, either you put this in try block and catch the exception. This is a one choice you have. Okay. Or don't blame me later that I haven't informed you because I informed you. I already wrote it here throws arithmetic exception so be careful so if... no, 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 no. Oh, one one question hmm. so we can't see the code right when we want to use the that addition division hmm. program div, uh, division hmm. we use class uh, we use object right how hmm. we know that she written the message when i'm using aquila's code hmm. We use the code or we use the object we create object and no like why would you use Akhila's division code being a developer or being someone who is writing the code why will you use uh, Akhila's code because you can go there and you can read the code right Akhila's code yes while executing you cannot see it unless you step in and then you read the code that is okay this is not hidden right this is public in nature you can read it anytime Okay. And one more thing, Aarti. When I am writing this code, hmm. this one is easy. It is zero. I know it's a throws arithmetic exception. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes I don't know it going to be wrong or exception. Hmm. I don't mention hmm. what they will do other people. See, so Sometimes I don't know it's going to be an exception. Okay. Now, Akila, now uh, follow the sequence, okay? You will be working on your laptop. You have personal laptop, okay? Sandhya okay. is working on her laptop. She is having her personal laptop. Similarly, every developer is having some personal laptop and their personal machine on which they will be working. Okay. Now, there is one pool in which everyone's code gets thrown, okay? At the end, that is a master pool, master branch. We say master branch. So everyone, what whosoever is writing the code, they want that their code should go in that master branch. Otherwise, it is of no use. Like you are working for Amazon, you worked on Amazon Prime, but your Amazon Prime code is not there in the main code. Then how that Amazon Prime will be visible to people? In the same way, you are writing this code, but you haven't thrown it yet in the master branch. For that, you have to go through a, a code review process. Some senior will review your code and they will when they will review, then they will definitely tell you that Akila, where is the output of your code? Can can I see the output of your code? So when you will show that code to them, that then they'll see, right? That exception is thrown. So they will ask you to change it or either mm -hmm. beforehand itself, you have to make sure that you see that error and you inform everyone. So any, like later on in code review also, you're going to get cached. So it's always better to before and beforehand only you handle it either or you don't inform people if you don't inform if you don't want to inform then handle it put it in try catch or if you don't want to put it in try catch then put it in just inform them simple so they will not they will not use it and if still if they want to use it they will handle it they will put it in try catch okay they will access it like this I mean, uh, I think she's asking, you know, if I'm not wrong, the same question I asked you before, you know, you know, like by zero is infinity, it will show an exception. Mm. Like whatever, if you don't know, like it's an exception. So how, um, where it throws the expression, like you don't know, uh, like one by two, it won't like, uh, it's not infinity, right? Mm. Some other number. Mm. Mm. So those we are, we know this is, exception mm -hmm. arithmetic expression mm -hmm. i mean don't know means in what case like we don't know the how the how they throw the exceptions like mm -hmm. they're, they're asking i think they're asking what are the types different different types there are so many there, there are thousands of types okay of exception but if you don't know uh, Sandhya, tell me one thing if you will go to office and you will work you cannot give your work unless you test it from your end right you cannot mm -hmm. give it for review so you will anyhow, you're going to know what kind of exception you are having. Either you print the message of it or whatever. But if you are writing any code, you are responsible for that, right? It should not throw any error. It should not have any dependency. It should not throw an exception. If it is throwing, then I should have handled it. 
so whatever people will question you for your course so even if you okay. don't know what kind of exception it throws at least you can let people know that it throws an exception but i don't know the solution of it so let's keep it aside you can use it for half of the code like suppose if they want something from here if they want these these data in their code and these mm -hmm. data will come because of your code only suppose mm -hmm. so they they will be like okay put your code in master we will use only this thing or number value from your code we will not use anything else put your code in master but make sure that you mention it that your code throws an exception so that we'll handle it or someone else someone new who joined the uh, company they will handle it okay they okay. will not later on blame you that uh, you know she does not write good code she hides so things. whatever we haven't resolved them we have to inform by mentioning in the public right exactly exactly okay, okay. in this way so every time if pravin will from others pravin started working on inheritance and mm -hmm. she want uh, sorry he want a uh, num value so he'll come here he'll check okay sum of total he wants to use but then he he will read that okay it throws exception so he mm -hmm. will be like okay let me use it and if they if i'll find the solution i'll give it to her or mm -hmm. if not then i'll handle it at my end and I, my code also is going to throw exception for example see here uh, it is throwing exception you don't handle it suppose you don't handle it here hmm. um try catch Suppose, suppose Pravin was working in the main method, and you were outside the main method. So you said it throws an exception. Okay, you informed it. But now, if Pravin will directly use it, of course Pravin's code will also throw an exception. Okay. Now, Pravin can do one thing. He can mention throws arithmetic exception. He can write it like this: that it throws arithmetic exception. Okay, so now what will happen? If someone will use Pravin's code also, they will also get to know that Pravin code also throws an exception. Now they will check because of mm -hmm. what, then they will do some solution to it, or they will make some, or they will write some solution for it. Uh, Ati, but, uh, we mm -hmm. can't simply write uh, throws and then exception. So you the written in the middle. Uh, yeah, yeah, just the exception. Why not? Okay. Yeah. You can. So. We don't need to mention, right? If we don't know, we can simply use exception. Yeah, so they yeah. know there is an exception, but we don't know which one, which type of exception. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the story about exception. Either you handle it. If you can't handle it, then put it in finally, like whatever you want to execute at the end, or you handle it separately. Different, different exception, different, different process to handle it, or if you finally with with all these methods if you can't handle it at least inform people that this code throws an exception this is just for information purpose nothing else yep. okay mm -hmm. or the last thing here is about exception that you can use your customized exception also for example this was arithmetic right so if you see here uh, where is it here i was Printing message by my end, correct. I was writing sys dot out. Sorry, system dot out dot print l uh, print l in to throw customized message. Instead of that, what I can do, I can create my exception and um, okay, okay, keep it aside and hmm. Stream S T R I S. Mm, yeah. You called it here. Okay. You are not handling it here, but here you're gonna get an exception. So let's see. Hmm. 
Mm, how they created one second. Throw new by block. Okay, and Let me check out the syntax of it. One second, guys, okay? Pro mm -hmm. new arithmetic exception and in bracket you will write. Mm -hmm. What is the index of it? One second. Throw and throws are different, guys. Okay. Throws is just for information. Throw is for a uh, customized exception. So if you see, throw new arithmetic. This is what I'm writing. What is the issue here? Throw new arithmetic exception divided by zero. I do the same thing. Throw new. No, it's, it's, in, it's in the bracket. You're ending the bracket at the end, yeah. But the... Okay. Mm, okay. Not in this way. It does not get handled in this way. One second, let me see the code. You got the error. Now you are throwing a new exception. That exception message is demo. You will catch it here and you will write it here. So what should be the output? Output should be and throw E. Throw E. Okay, one second, guys. Mm. Demo, null pointer exception. Null pointer exception will come here, E, and then throw E. Really throwing the exception. Mm -mm. Why would you do that? One second. Throw demo EE. -E. Okay. See. If you are getting exception here for null, you are throwing arithmetic exception. Sorry, not arithmetic. Null pointer. Null pointer exception it will throw. And this null pointer exception you will catch here. And you will say if null pointer exception come, then return the message. Now. What nonsense. Okay. It should actually print this message on the screen. Why it is not printing? Divide by zero, divide by zero, divide by zero here. Uh, you should put that in try block, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, it is never, it is not even reaching my code, right? Because here yeah, because... only it is spelling. Uh oh. Okay. See, my code executed from here. This exception came first. So it never reached my code. So that's why. Now it, I commented it. Now it will reach my code and here it will get the exception. Okay. My mistake. Hmm. See this. What I am doing here is I created my exception my message, my customized message for exception, okay? Now, if you see, I don't have to do this, sys.out, this is exception, sys.out, this is exception, sys.out. So instead of sys.out, I can say, if in my this code where you are trying, if you will get any null pointer exception, then you print this message. This is one way of representing the same thing, but using throw new exception, like I'm customizing my exception message here. So it will throw that message here. You get my point? Instead of sys.out, you can write it in this way also. Nothing else. Simple code. 
instead of sys dot out i am just throwing new null pointer exception because i know that this code will or even if i don't know i want that if something some exception comes then null pointer exception will get thrown out of this okay so if you see read this simple concept here the throw keyword in java is used to explicitly throw an exception from a method or a block of code okay we can throw either a checked or unchecked exception ignore this checked or unchecked means um, they are different part of exception okay ignore this take it as take this as exception only but the throw keyword is in java is used for explicitly throw an exception the throw keyword is mainly used to throw an custom exception custom exception okay like here you are sending divide by 0 i can send anything else also so i have two choice either i'll write sys out or i'll write this thing using this also i'll be returning customized exception i want to throw that exception okay so throw people normally don't use that much but still you should know why it is getting used you guys understanding it so if yeah. you see this code they are throwing one exception that exception is getting cached here and whatever you will write this this out they are writing that will also get printed but at the same time demo will also get printed because you customized it and made it to be thrown so this will also will get through this will also get through so if you see in the output what inside function what inside function what in main also oh demo is not getting printed why not no oh, i have to do log in and all let it be Let's give it a try. Give it a try. You will understand it. What is really happening here? Okay, give it a try. Copy the same code and execute it at your end. Do some minor changes, and you will understand it. Yeah. Okay. So this is all about exception. Everything about exception. What is exception? How many types of exceptions are there? How to handle different type of exception? Uh, What is try uh, block? Uh, hmm. Ati. Uh. So in try block, we don't print anything, right? How come the demo will? Give like we will get an output demo. No, you asked the question before in the in the example. Hmm. Sorry, so where is it? We we print only the catch block. We print the exception catch block hmm. only, right? Hmm. So when you open the website somewhere, new company. Yeah. Yeah. You open, uh, yeah. Here yeah, you you saying why demo not printing? Hmm. Because we are writing in try block, right? That should the result right? It should print demo. But we are not executing this program because of no sign in. No, that is okay. I'll sign in. But okay, I'm trying to understand Pravin's uh, question here. One second. So, like normally in try block, before you explain ex well. How to handle exception? Mm. We use try block mm. and we put the code in try block, mm. and then we will write in the catch block what type mm. of exception we are getting, and mm. we are printing that in the screen in the mm. console. Mm. So here you ask why demo not printing? Mm. Like how come demo will print? Like because we created it for this is for custom mess. Okay. See in my code, am I using this is in try block? I'm gonna get. Some error here, right? But this is the message which I want people should see if some kind of exception will come in my code. I want to I want to throw that exception exceptionally, okay? So that's why this is getting printed. Either it is in catch or not, that is not my concern for a moment. I wanted that this try block should throw this exception, null pointer exception. So this is throwing it. See. Later on, whatever you are catching, whatever you are writing in the catch block, get message or whatever, that will get printed. That is okay. But then this thing will definitely get print because I customized it. I made it to be thrown. This is a customized exception. Okay, how to explain it now? Ah, uh, one second. Let's see some other code for Java throw. Let's see if we have. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Send up. One second, I think. Hmm. So that's the syntax. Throw new. 
yeah just yeah. new and then what kind of exception you want to throw exception name so, yeah so look at this code okay look at this code now instead of this throw new exception i could have written sys out person is not eligible to vote system dot out or print ln right yeah but i want no i i don't want to print a message i want to throw it as a exception on the screen so i am creating my exception because i don't know uh, that kind of exception is there or not because divide by 0 age is less than 18 is not a exception correct yeah. age is less than 18 is not a exception but i want to make it as exception i want that every time in my code if this kind of situation happens i want it should be thrown as exception for me i want to see it as exception uh, companies have their rules right companies have their rules that okay if dot is not provided or semicolon is not provided instead of error throw it as exception whatever okay so yeah. so they are they made their customized exception and they are saying okay if anywhere in the entire code if age is less than 18 throw it as a exception don't throw it as a statement on a screen throw it as a exception so we'll handle it so we made our customized exception and we are trying to handle it okay but i provided the condition i said if this is there if the age is less than 18 then only send this uh, automatic exception otherwise don't send it then only we'll handle it so it is customized exception people don't use it normally but you should know it that people have their rule in their organization that if this is a case or if password is not present throw an exception password is not present but my java compiler java people java organization who wrote that code they are not aware about this thing that we follow this in my company so they will not give me any definition of these kind of exception arithmetic they gave file not found they gave everything they gave but they haven't given me any exception for age less than 18 they don't know what is age right so we created our own exception customized exception that if age is less than 18 then throw in customized exception and let us know the message of the exception which is this Yeah. And then how you gonna handle it? Catch or no catch? Whatever you can do that also. Simple. Yeah. So don't worry about throw that much. You're not gonna use it that much. But then if people ask you what is throw used for, then tell it for throwing and customized exception. Yeah. Company specific exception. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to our code. And are they? Hmm. I'm really sorry. No, you no, are no. telling about off outside method main method. You are writing this uh, this one mm. like a um, public int division, mm. and you are creating objects. You want to tell something about there. So I'm asking some. We are asking some other dots. That's why we are connected to other side. What do you want? What you are telling here? why you are creating objects in that main method and why you are creating this methods here these things because i wanted to show you throws keyword right that because of someone else's code when you used it in your code mm -hmm. you you were not aware about this thing that you know mm -hmm. uh, akhila's code or sandhya's code actually throws an exception pravin was not aware of that pravin directly came here he created an object and he used it but he was mm -hmm. not aware about akhila's code or sandhya's code throws an exception so i okay. want to show this from outside the main method or i could have created this in a, another class and from there if pravin is using it in your class then again the same issue that if your code throws an exception let us know let us know we'll handle it or I'll, we'll ask you to handle it but don't let pravin suffer because of your code so okay throw importance of throws i was explaining you there and importance of throw also okay so two things here nothing else okay so now guys these are the important thing okay uh, let me write it down everything try catch try multiple catch finally block throw keyword throws keyword okay five things about exception these five things should be on your fingertips any time any question can come from exception handling which is very important topic okay everyone so throws for throws is for informing just for informing, informing. throw is for throw customized is for exception customization. finally is for compulsory post condition whatever should happen at the end at any cost that you will write in finally and if you want that any code should execute then handle the exception put it after catch first catch it 
first handle it and then put it then only it will get handled you see that the code is so big lengthy 99 lines of code but it is so simple i mean one thing repetitively repetitively you are using it and that's why it is lengthy but code is simple guys if you'll debug it you will understand okay the code came here and then here now here you got exception line number 30 so exception will get thrown in the console then then you will see so debug your code you will understand it okay yep and don't worry about the remaining exceptions there are so many exceptions but uh, most of the time 90% of the time you going to get these exceptions only yeah clear okay so yeah that's that's all for today let me stop okay. the recording one second if you don't have any question do you guys have any question mm -hmm. no no okay